We want to continue working on our implementation of our bank design. So we have implemented the customer and the account, at least to a reasonable extent. Now we want to work on the bank. So if we look at our design, the bank is supposed to keep track of customers and accounts, and it needs to have a few different methods here. And in fact, quite possibly the easiest way to do this is just to paste between these. Now, of course, the UML text is not valid Scala code, but it's not too far off. So, customers and accounts. At least for the time being, I am willing to say that both of these are going to be private VARs. And the reason for that is we're not currently interested in being able to load in a bank from a file or anything like that. Uh, if we were, then we would consider making these arguments so that the bank could be built with those things in place. And then each of the rest of these should become a def. Okay, how could we implement these? Let's see. Add a customer. Well, we get a first name and a last name. This shouldn't be too hard. We can say underscore customers cons equals. We need to create a new customer. And if we go and look at our customer, the constructor needs a first name, a last name, and an ID, and then a an address. Hmm, actually, that will cause us some problems right here because we did not make add customer take an address. And we're going to need that information if we want to build a new customer. So I am going to change our design and say that when we add a customer, we have to pass in address. Otherwise, we would have a hard time building our new customer. So F name, L name. This is where things get a little bit interesting. I'm going to put some question marks there. Okay. <laughs> Note that that line of code is perfectly happy and compiles, but of course when it evaluates the three question marks, it would crash. What can we put there? Well, every customer should have a unique ID for them. Every account will also need a unique ID. So one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it so that for each bank, it keeps a private var of the next customer number. I'll just start off at zero. And then we'll make this equal to next customer number. Private var, that's an int. Oh, and these are strings. So dot two string. We could consider padding it with zeros. I'm not going to take the time to write the code for that right now. But now they would all be zeros. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make it so that every time that we add a customer, we're going to add seven to our customer number. So the first customer will have ID seven, the next one will have ID 14, 21, etc. What about opening an account? Well, when we open account, we pass it a customer. Let's look at our account. The account to be created has to have a customer and it has to have an ID. Well, we need to add this account to the accounts, underscore accounts, cons equals. We need to make a new account. The customer is C and as you could probably guess, I'm going to do roughly the same thing. The next account number, which doesn't exist yet. So let's make one. Private var next account number. It will also start off at zero. And I'm going to increment these by a different number. So account number plus equals 13. And once again, these are not strings, but I can convert them to strings. Obviously, I want these to be ints so that I can do things like add 7 and add 13. Oh, and this needs to return our new account. So, how about we do this? Val account equals, and then that. 
and then we can give back the account that we just created. Close account. So if we close an account, what things need to happen? Well, definitely it's going to come off of the list of accounts. So somehow I need to get rid of it. It turns out that I can just say accounts equals accounts.filter. We have this happy method that goes through and only keeps things that satisfy a predicate function. And I want to keep anything that is not equal to A, the account that I'm removing. That's not, probably not the only thing that we should do. If I have closed an account here, then, okay, the, uh, let's see. I did make this so it returns a Boolean, and doing things this way is going to cause us a little bit of an issue in that, yes, I will have removed it unless it wasn't there, and if it wasn't there, then this would not know at all. So how about we do this? If underscore accounts dot contains a then we'll do this which will wind up giving back true else false okay I'll make that reasonably happy on this line in between we just closed an account that account has a customer associated with it that customer currently knows about the account well if the customer has that account and we're closing the account they shouldn't when we're done so we should be able to ask the account for its customer and then remove an account and give it the ID of this account note there is a potential issue here in that this remove account returns a boolean right now I'm not checking it if that boolean were to come back false that would indicate a significant problem for our program. We would need to indicate that. So I guess we could go ahead and say something like, if that's not true, then we need to, and really we would use a logger and we'd log some information. We'll just go ahead and, and print line out account wasn't part of customer. Okay, something so that other code could be informed that there was an issue here. Okay, find a customer. Find There are two versions of find customer. This is another thing that is worth pointing out. Scala allows you to, this, to do this. This is what's called overloading. So when you have two different methods with the same name, you have overloaded that method name. It only works if they take different sets of arguments. So the arguments either have to have different types or different numbers of arguments. So if we pass two strings, Scala knows we're using the first version. If we pass one string, it knows we're using the second version. We could also have a, a version that takes a single int and it would say, okay, well, based upon whether it's an int or a string, it would use the appropriate version. If you try to write two of the same function that take the same set of arguments, it won't compile. Also for both of the, for all, all the find methods, we return an option because there is the possibility that it won't be found. Now, we could write code that goes through and does a loop, but it turns out there is already a higher order method that returns an option. So if I'm looking for a customer, I could go through the customers, that is currently not plural, we will change that in just a second, and I want to find the first customer C, <clears throat> such that c dot first name is equal to f name and c dot last name is equal equal to l name and the find method returns an option of the customer if it finds something that matches it'll return some of that customer and if it doesn't it will return none we can do the same thing here and the code looks very similar customer dot find except because I only have one condition I don't even need to introduce a variable I can use the short front the short version here underscore dot ID equals equals ID and then the finding an account is going to look very similar so we're going to just going to say underscore dot no 
underscore accounts dot find underscore dot ID equals equals ID and there we go now we have our bank written I did notice earlier one thing I'm a little bit unhappy about is that this is not plural that's actually fairly easy to fix we will do I'll do an alt shift R for rename and add an S here and that will rename should rename all of them that was interesting bug and eclipse there okay there we go so we'll come back in the next video and we'll look at how we can create our main object and our main method to actually potentially run some aspects of this bank utilize this code so that we can actually test it a little bit